That's so brilliant. This video is sponsored by Case Filters. You know, in a perfect world, you plan the weather, you plan a rough composition or at least a rough subject. Then you hike there, you go into setup, maybe you have a little snack while you're waiting for the right light, right? But in reality, we often come into situations, you know, when everything turns out different in there. And that is the moment when we have to improvise, as it happened to me in my latest landscape photography adventure. My friends, very nice to see you. I'm still in Italy. <laughs> I'm still followed by bad luck. Yeah, really a streak of bad luck actually. And the thing is, I'm here at the place uh, where, which is well known by amazingly many flowers, a big flowers uh, meadow, wild flowers, all colors, reds, blue, yellows, everything. And uh, in my research, I so saw it's blooming up from May till September, but now I arrived and there were no flowers at all. <laughs> so I'm not able again to photograph <laughs> what I've planned to photograph. And that's not good. I think it's more over there. These green fields here I usually colorized. I hope you can see them. Yeah, this is how things are. And so the problem is I'm here uh, in the Apennine Mountains on a pass and I don't see all the many other options. I have to say the only option I really see here is here seems to be a nice old town on that hill up there. It's not possible to see all too much from, from this perspective. And what I'm trying to do is, I want to hike up a little bit on a mountain back there, an elevation of 200 meters or something like that. And then I hope to be able to photograph down there to this castle. I don't know, when, when uh, everything works as I thought, we would also get a little bit of light through a little bit later. Right now, everything is a little bit dark. It's a little bit of rainy. Oh yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> it's any bit possible to get a fantastic photograph. You know, landscape photography is like a game of cards, I would say. We can't control which cards we get, but what we can definitely do is we can try to play the best possible game with the cards we've got. Oh yeah, and that's what we were trying to do. There's a little bit of light back there. We got uh, gappy clouds predicted from photos, which is good. But I'm not sure if I will get the uh, light on this, on this uh, ruin here. I will see. Fingers crossed there for. <laughs> it's crazy, really. I came up here now this hill. And uh, I mentioned it already before that we got light spots everywhere down there on the field. Yeah, we have a uh, gappy sky predicted, uh, gappy clouds predicted from photos today. This means we got a game of between uh, shadow and light there and where. And when I came around here exactly in that moment, I saw that there was a big light spot exactly at the ruin down there. And it looked so fantastic. Also a little bit around and so on the hills there and where we got such a fantastic plasticity. I, yeah, I put my, my driver down, but didn't really make sense, to be honest. Uh, I, I just put it down, then I grabbed the camera and I shoot out of the hip, really just without a tripod. It's much better in such a case because you don't have time to find you in that case. Find you is just by, you know, a handheld and then I just made the click and I will show the image right now. This spot is really, really amazing. I really love it. And the thing is, the original plan of my plan B actually was 
to come up here and to look for a composition, try out different camera uh, positions from here, to photograph down there to the castle. And what well, I thought is because when the sun will go down a little bit more back there, we will get everything in shadow in the foreground. And with a little bit of luck, we will get just the, the castle illuminated back there. And maybe a little bit of plasticity with the hills down there. Um, and I mean, I, I, will, I will still um, try to do that. The thing is just, it's so fantastic. It happened again that I got some light spots down there with Gappy Sky. I mean, Gappy Sky is really fantastic because you, you can uh, play around with different compositions. The only problem is here is not much. I mean, here are some hills, here are a lot of hills and so, but the really prominent point here is yeah, the castle with these lines down here and so. And what, what I like, and I, I was a little bit more back there. I came down again because I, I like this, this, uh, yeah, this hill here down here, which is repeated back there on the hill where the castle is on. Oh man, so fantastic. The light always comes a little bit through and also really directly also on the ruin. It's really, really amazing. And one important thing, by the way, when you get the game between light and shadow, as we have it here down there, sometimes it's, it's fine so that uh, that's a really a complete gap so that the sun gets complete through. So, uh, sometimes we have a little bit of softness there, but sometimes there also comes the direct sunlight through and so you get the light a little bit too harsh. And so what I did is I put a black mist filter on. It's a quarter stop in this case. And it just, it, it, it takes a little bit of contrast. It takes this, this harshness a tiny bit away. And this really adds to a photograph like that when you want to get it a little bit more smooth, a little bit more, yeah, fine not photograph. As the weather got quite unstable, I decided to hike back to my van. There was also no direct sunlight at sunset anymore, so the decision to use gappy clouds in the afternoon was just right. One thing maybe, it had been better to hike up already earlier to be honest. I didn't do that because yeah, I didn't arrive earlier. It was a drive of some hours, you know, and I went up immediately after I saw that there were no wildflowers. However, being early is definitely a good tip when it comes down to improvising because that offers you simply a tiny bit more time to think about your options. Funny by the way, I got a lot of photos this afternoon, but the best one was my first one, which I took without tripod. And that's quite interesting, I have to say. So many landscape photographers tend to think they would always need to use a tripod. I mean, don't get me wrong here, a tripod offers some big advantages and that not only for long exposures, for landscape photography in general. But I mean, what is better, using a tripod and missing the height or relinquishing the tripod and getting the shot? And when we look at my handheld shot, I showed you already, it is completely sharp, the composition works and the timing, yeah, I mean, it's just perfect. So who cares if you're using a tripod or not? And another good tip is, yeah, that's maybe even the most important tip, I think. You know, especially when you put a lot of effort into your planning, it can be quite frustrating when your plan doesn't work at all in the end. And exactly that is the point when we tend to give up. But landscape photography shouldn't have any exit plans or so, at least not before we got a shot or when it gets really dangerous, of course. Again, landscape photography is like a game of cards. We can't control which cards we get, but we can try to play the best possible game with the cards 
we got. And I have to say, I'm quite happy with the game I played today. And by the way, even if the light would be yeah, just flat or so, it is anyway possible to get great photos by shooting black and white, for instance. And I made already a video about that. I will link it here for you. And friends, I hope you liked this video. If yes, please give me a thumbs up. I thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.